let's discuss the books I read this month, shall we? Hello, shy bays. Hello, besties. It is officially the last day of February. So, of February, February. That's such a weird month to say. I sound like Nick Miller. <laughs> Nick Miller, Nick Miller from the streets of Chicago. What was I talking about? I read. I think 19 books this month and I am here to tell you all about them. Obviously no spoilers in any of these videos ever. I just tell you a little summary of what the book is about and what I thought, what I rated it. Just that. Um, just that. Yeah, period. <laughs> also, we are back in the Larry Mobile or as I like to call it, the Darth Vader. I named my car Darth Vader. Mind your business. You don't need to know why. It's because I love Anakin Skywalker. And my car is black on the outside and then all cute and flowery on the inside and I feel like that's Darth Vader. Well, I'm gonna start off with this series that I read this month and that would be The Brutal Birthright series by Sophie Large. I'm gonna go through each book but also just in general this is a mafia series. I would say this is a very good series if you're starting out with mafia like if you're new to it and you just wanna you know dip your little toes in this is a very good one because it's not too much mafia you know what I mean like it has a little bit of everything. It's also very spicy so if you're in the mood for a spicy series this would definitely be one for you. So this is the order that you would read it in. So Brutal Prince is the first book and this follows Callum and Ada. This one is an arranged marriage between two mafia families. So you have like kind of rival mafia families and something happens where Ada is forced to marry Callum. There's definitely enemies to lovers vibe. What I loved so much about this is it was actually enemies to lovers. Like the kind where they try to each other. Yeah, you love to see it. This was definitely one of my favorites. I really, really liked this book. I rated it 4.5. Ada was the star of the show for this book for me. I did like Callum a lot. He was great, but Ada was just everything. She's an icon. She's a legend. She's the moment. So yeah, 4.5 for Brutal Prince. Then we have Stolen Air, and this one is a Beauty and the Beast meets Mafia kind of thing. Not a full retelling, but you know, that energy. You have Nessa and you have Miko and he is also in the mafia, but same thing like a rival mafia family. Basically Miko kidnaps Nessa for revenge. So that's where you have like the Beauty and the Beast retelling energy. If you like Grumpy Sunshine, there was definitely that vibe with them because Nessa is so innocent, so sweet, so sunshine, and Miko is anything but that. So <laughs> I rated this one a four. I really, really enjoyed it. Brutal Prince was still my favorite, but I really liked this one too. Then you go into Savage Lover and Savage Lover was very different than the rest for me. It was Fast and Furious kind of vibe. <laughs> There was less mafia and more cars because you have Nero and he meets Camille and they're both like car fanatics kind of thing. You know, she works on cars. He steals cars, you know, same energy. <laughs> And he is basically this like beautiful guy who says he'll never fall in love, kind of like a playboy. And then he meets Camille. Lots of Fast and Furious energy with this one. Lots of cars, lots of vroom vroom. I rated it a four star. It was probably my least favorite in the series, but I really enjoyed it still. Then you have Bloody Heart, y'all. This one was so good. This one was a second chance romance, which is one of my favorite tropes. So I knew I would like this one. It was so much more than I was expecting because you have Dante and you have Simone and they meet when they're really young and you get to see that in the first half of the book. You get to see them meet you get to see them falling in love and then nine years later you see what's happening to them now you see why they separated why they've been apart for so long and then they reunite and it's <laughs> second chance romance always hits honestly but this one was so special because it was one of those second chance that was still it's always been you kind of energy because he never forgot her and she never forgot him this man like the quotes that he has in here about just seeing her face everywhere he didn't forget her for nine years, as he fucking should. Dante, honestly, was just such a simp for Simone. Like, he was down bad the entire book. And I love to see it. I love to see men on their knees, both ways. <laughs> This one was very, very good. I rated it a 4.5. I loved it. Then you have Broken Vow, and this one is Riona and Raylan's book. Riona is a hotshot lawyer. She is a bad bitch. She is independent. She's hot as fuck. And Raylan is a cowboy. Not really a cowboy, but like he gives off cowboy energy. He has the accent. He wears a hat, you know, cowboy vibes. And he was in the military with Dante and he comes to help him with something in Bloody Heart. You get to meet him. And then someone is trying to kill Riona in this book. No one knows why and no one knows who it is, but Raylan is tasked basically to be her bodyguard. In this book, my favorite part was seeing Riona let down her walls because you get to see her in all the other Brutal Birthright books and she's very, very closed off. But then in this book, you understand why and Raylan puts those walls down and save a horse, ride a motherfucking cowboy, y'all. The barn scene in this, 
I'll never forget it. 4.5, amazing. And lastly, you've got Heavy Crown, the finale, the finale, the season finale, hello? The last book. <laughs> <laughs> the last book in the series and it follows Sebastian and Yelena. Sebastian sees Yelena getting stuffed in a trunk one night and he saves her and her family is also a rival mafia family to his so he thinks that he should have left her there but he couldn't resist and I don't want to tell you anything about this one because there was a couple twists and turns that if I say anything it'll give it away so I think this was a great finale. Why do I keep calling it finale? I think this was a great ending to the series. Um, 4.25 I really enjoyed it. Yelena wasn't my favorite girl main character but I still really really loved the plot and I liked the couple. I was just not obsessed with Yelena, you know? Oh, also every single book in the Brutal Birthright series is dual POV, so you do get the whole story. We love to see it. So now that I told you a little bit about each book, I would say this is a really great series if you want to get into Mafia, like I told you. There is Mafia in it, but it's not too much where it's so dark and you just get thrown in there, you know? There's a a mix between spice, between a little bit of mafia, between action, between romance. So you get a little bit of everything, which I enjoyed. My favorites are definitely, definitely, definitely Brutal Prince, Bloody Heart, and Broken Vow. Those three are just... The only reason why none of them were full five is because I didn't feel so emotionally connected. Even when it's dark romance, even when it's mafia, I like to see a little bit of fluff. I like to see the emotional connection. And I didn't fully get that from these, which is why none of them were five. But I still really loved it. It was such a great experience. I love the series. The Gallo siblings and the Griffin siblings are the main part of these books because Callum is a Griffin and Ada is a Gallo. So then that sets up for the other books where you get Nessa, who is also a Griffin. She's Callum's sister. And then you get Nero, who is Ada's brother. And then you get Dante, who's also Ada's brother. And then you get Riona, who is Callum's other sister. Lastly, Sebastian, who is the last of Ada's brothers. So you get to see the Griffins and the Gallows in this entire um, universe, which I loved. And I'm so excited to read Kingmakers because it's about their kids. I love Sophie Lark, but you already know that. So next up, while we're on the subject of like dark energy, we've got Lotus. <laughs> by Jennifer Hartman y'all you know that I read Still Beating recently and it became one of my favorite books of all time so obviously I had to dive into Lotus um they're not connected so you don't need to read Still Beating to read Lotus but you should because Still Beating is amazing but basically in Still Beating you see for like approximately one second this boy named Oliver and he was apparently held in captivity for a really long time and he's like on the news there and you get his story in Lotus this book has one of the most heartbreaking amazing stories I've ever seen you have Oliver and you have Sydney and it is dual POV. Oliver was held in captivity for 22 years. He went missing on a 4th of July as a little boy and 22 years later he resurfaces and obviously everybody wants to know what the fuck's going on. To the world he's Oliver Lynch, this boy with this crazy story, but to Sydney he's just her childhood best friend who she's loved her entire life. Y'all I have no words for this book. I rated it five stars. The plot twists really fucking got me. I usually am a person who doesn't get got very often, but this, it got got me. <laughs> It is very dark, so for sure search up trigger warnings, um, just like still beating, you're gonna need them if you wanna read this. But it is so beautiful. It was one of the most heart-wrenching but heartwarming stories I've ever seen. The reason why it's called Lotus is amazing, the cover makes sense, the quotes are incredible. Oliver is one of the sweetest heroes I've ever seen. He gave me very much Archer Hale vibes. If you guys have read Archer's voice and you like Archer, I feel like you would really like Oliver. I would definitely recommend, but like I said, search up trigger warnings. Then I got into a little Valentine's Day spirit with claimed by cupid a little steamy novella i recently filmed an amazon haul where i talked about the books you guys got me and this one was in there but since that video hasn't been posted yet let me say it here as well thank you so much amber for getting me this amber allen Mwah. i love you so so much you're gonna see it in the video when i post it but i just needed to say it here as well since it's not posted yet and by cupid this is a steamy spicy novella obviously it's very very short you know hence novella it's 124 pages i read the first book in this series which was dipped in holly in december and then obviously i had to read claimed by cupid this is still nick and nora's um nick and nora hello <laughs> what's his name why am i blanking on this guy's name wait his name is nick i'm blanking on her name oh it's holly oh <laughs> I was thinking of Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Anyway, Nick and Holly, their story starts in Dipped in Holly. So you need to read that first before you read this one. But that one's also just a quick spicy novella. It's a Christmas theme and then this one's Valentine's Day theme. It just continues their story basically. Nick is a silver fox and then you've got Holly who is um, 
not a silver fox. Very, very, very age gap, y'all. Listen, Dipped in Holly, I rated three, 3.5, and this one I would say is the same, three stars. Nothing I'm obsessed with and that I would go tell you to run and read it right now, but if you're in the mood for spicy novellas, if you're in the mood for a quick read that'll just get you out of a slump and that's just full, full of smut, then I would say you'd probably really like this, you know? But I rated it three stars. It was fun. Now for a novella that I really, really liked that was Under One Roof by Allie Hazelwood. This came out originally only on Audible. I don't know if it's actually out on Kindle or anything yet, but I listened to it. I loved it. The experience of listening to it, incredible. And Allie Hazelwood does have two other novellas that are gonna involve the best friends of the one in this book. It's gonna be amazing. I'm already so excited. So in this book you have Mara and you have Leah. Mara is an environmental engineer and she moves in with like this big oil lawyer. <laughs> So you already see where things can go wrong there. Uh, Mara basically moves in with him because her mentor passes away and leaves her half of her house, but the other half goes to her nephew, who is Liam. I really enjoyed this novella. I rated it four. It was so, so cute. It was so good. It was one of those novellas that didn't feel like a novella because you really got to know Liam and you really got to know Mara and them as a couple. It was so cute. There was such sweet moments. There was also a little bit of spice there at the end. My man's at the end pulled out a good girl y'all <laughs> i damn near passed out but yeah overall this was a very cute novella i would definitely say you should listen to it under one roof and soon we're gonna get sadie and hannah's story who are mara's best friends in this book and we do get to see them and like kind of infer what's gonna happen in their stories which is really exciting so it's gonna be stuck with you and below zero which i'm so excited about i would love to own these so hopefully they come out in paperback eventually because the covers are so fucking cute like look at this one please adorable anyway four stars i loved it next up shoddy bay's ignite by Melanie Harlow. Ah! This book is one of those that I also showed in the Amazon haul that's coming soon. So shout out to Maria. Thank you so much. I love you, Bastien. Thank you for getting me the physical copy. I love you. Ignite, y'all. So this is part of a series. However, I did just read this one. Like I literally just jumped right into it. Um, but I heard that the series is really good. So if you want to go read the entire thing in order, you know, go for it. They can be read as standalones. You know, I could definitely tell there was some um, series energy in it. Like some of the characters, I was like, oh, I feel like their story was shown before. But, you know, it didn't stop me from reading it. I really enjoyed it anyway. So in Ignite, you've got Winnie and you've got Dex and they are 12 years apart. So you do have some age gap and he is her hot firefighter neighbor. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then get this single dad. You have age gap, you have single dad, you have hot firefighter, and you have grumpy sunshine? Are you joking? So Whitney basically considers herself a romance junkie. She falls in love too often and too fast. And Dex basically doesn't want to fall in love ever again after his divorce with his ex-wife. So he doesn't believe in fairy tales and she believes in fairy tales too much. You put those two together. That is a recipe for fucking disaster. This book was so good. This book is one of those that would get you out of a slump. So if you are just wanting to read nothing right now and you are not in the mood, pick up this book. He's the dad to two little girls. And that was my favorite part of the book. Listen, kids in books, if it's done well, it can add so much to the story. And this one was one of those because his kids, they were so funny. They were so cute. They were my favorite part. Like the romance was incredible. And I loved Winnie and Dex for sure. I loved the spice. I loved the age gap. I love all of it. But the kids, they were the best part. And you don't hear me say that often. <laughs> I did rate this a 4.5. The only reason why I didn't rate it a full five is because there was a little bit too much back and forth for me. I don't want to say exactly why, but if there wasn't back and forth constantly, like if they would just get their shit together, it would have been a five. But because the back and forth really annoyed me, it was a 4.5, but I still really, really fucking enjoyed it. It was so good and it's set up so well for the next book, Taste, that I'm definitely going to read this month. This month? next month technically next month in march i'm gonna read it in march pick this up if you are in a slump and you want to get out and you want a quick read that you're just gonna be fully invested in yeah ignites definitely that now we've got things we never got over by lucy score please look at this cover this is the most beautiful cover you've ever seen and the cover has something to do with the book as well this book was adorable y'all this book was small town energy this book was kind of a single parent trope this book was grumpy sunshine so here you have naomi and you have Knox, and it is dual pov and naomi strolls into town to bail her twin sister out of trouble as she has done her whole life and then she gets stuck with an 11 year old niece she had no idea she had with no money and no car because her sister stole them she basically has to stay in this town and work and take care of this kid and naomi is definitely a people pleaser she constantly wants to make people happy so she stays to do just that in this small town and then you have Knox, this is a very very grumpy man who decides it is his duty to help naomi in her situation y'all 
<laughs> the coffee shop vibes, the riding around in bicycles, the like cottage core, very small town where everybody knows everyone, like local bar, all of that is in here. I loved this book. There was also spice too. It wasn't like an insane amount of spice, but spice nonetheless, you know what I mean? Knox was fucking everything. He is described as like this hot bearded tattooed Viking. And I was just picturing Chris Evans the whole time for some reason, but I was picturing Chris Evans like circa, you know, infinity war slash end game energy. Whenever Knox would like come out clean cut and like shaved and stuff, I would picture Chris Evans Endgame. And then whenever he would come out like with his gigantic beard and looking scruffy, I would picture Chris Evans Infinity War. You know, it was just Chris Evans for me the whole time. <laughs> Basically Chris Evans. <laughs> Naomi was one of my favorite main characters. She makes the best out of things. She's not one of those to sit and complain, which I really enjoyed. She's not whiny. She's just like, let's get the shit done. And Knox just wanted to take care of her the whole time. Like the person that always takes care of people getting taken care of now a trope I never knew I needed. I rated this a 4.75. Let me explain. I did adore every fucking second of it, but it kind of lost me a little bit because it's so long. I love long books. Usually I have no problems with them whatsoever, but if it gets a little bit too repetitive, it kind of loses me. It's hard to keep me interested for that long. And this one kind of lost me at some points, which is the only reason why it was 4.75. But I still loved it. I loved the ending. I love Knox. I love Naomi. And everybody in the town, in fact, I adored. Y'all, one more thing. Naomi was coffee obsessed. Is this fucking play about us? <laughs> Was this book about me, Lucy Score? You should definitely pick this up. Things we never got over. And you need this cover in your life. Now, in case you guys don't know, I have a little book club on Fable that's called the Romance and Coffee Book Club. If you want to join, link in description. Go do it. And for the book club this month, we read Before Things. Hello? Before Things? Before we were strangers. <laughs> So you have Matt and you have Grace and they meet at NYU in college and they form this fucking epic romance, fall completely head over heels in love. And then they are separated for a reason. And now you get 15 years later, they run into each other again. This book was very unique in the sense of it started off with the 15 years later and then it goes back. And so the first half of the book, you get the past, you get to see them meet and you get to see them in college, you get to see them fall in love. And then you get to see the reason why they separated and 15 years later, they reunite unite and they get a second chance. One of my favorite fucking parts about this book is it's set in New York in the 90s. So you get that whole energy and that whole vibe. The aesthetic of this book was incredible because Matt is a photography major. So he was constantly taking pictures of Grace and Grace is a music major. So she was always playing. Oh, the energy of this book was so good. I adored it. I definitely like the past chapters more than I like the present ones. The 15 years later one, I expected to like way more, but Instead, I liked the past ones way more. I rated this 4.75 for that exact reason because I got really pissed about some of the things that happened. I will not say exactly what, but nevertheless, amazing book. One of those, like I said, that you'll never forget. It also has amazing quotes, hence why I annotated it so much. Go join my Fable Book Club so that you can be a part of the next book we read next month. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, link in the description. <laughs> Shoddy Bays, I did something amazing this month. I read The Kiss Quotient. I have been planning to read The Kiss Quotient for so incredibly long. I would say it has been on my TBR for over six months. And I finally read it this month. And not only did I read The Kiss Quotient, but I read the next one, which is The Bride Test. I didn't read The Heart Principle yet. I'm probably going to read it this month. I'm so very excited. The Bride Test is also a book I showed in my Amazon haul. So Tiffany Yan, thank you so much for getting it for me. You'll see it on the haul, but you know, just wanted to reiterate since you'll see this first. The Kiss Quotient and The Bride Test, y'all. This series is so good. The hyper on the Kiss Quotient is very, very, very much warranted. It was amazing. And the Bride Test, I would say, was even better. This was definitely my favorite. These books are interconnected standalones. This with the Heart Principle. So you can read it as standalones, of course. You know, it sets up for the characters in the next ones and they are all related like the guy in this book is related to the guy in this book and the guy in this book is related to the guy in the heart principle so it's fun to read it all together i would recommend but if you want to read it as a standalone you definitely can in the kiss quotient you've got michael and you've got stella and michael is basically an escort that stella hires to help her learn how to date and in the bride test you've got kai and you've got esme and esme is basically flown out from vietnam to come marry kai because his mother arranges that marriage for him so yeah my Michael and Stella, Esme and Kai, and these are in third person, which, you know, not my favorite part, but the fact that it still didn't affect how I rated these books says a lot because both of them were five stars for me. I love these books so fucking much. One of my favorite parts of this series is the representation because in the Kiss Quotient, Stella has Asperger's, and then in the Bride Test, 
Kai has autism. So you get to see a lot of that throughout these books. And especially in the bride test, you also get to see a little bit of what it'd be like to come from a completely different country and not know the language. As you know, I came from Brazil. So this was amazing to see in a book. Like I said, she came from Vietnam. Just overall, these books have everything. It has romance. It has comedy. It has emotion. I loved the character so much. Like it is so character based, but also plot based. That's how you know it's a five star read when you are so focused on the characters because you love them so much. But then the plot is also impeccable. It has diverse characters. It is just amazing. Everything about these, I would highly recommend. I know it's in third person, which is not everybody's cup of tea, but you barely notice it with these books because it is so good. I love Quan, which is the guy who the third book is about. He was definitely my favorite as I was reading these, so I'm sure that his book is going to be my favorite as well, but so far the Bride Test is the one for me. Y'all, read the Kiss Quotient series. Read the Kiss Quotient and the Bride Test. Don't be like me where you wait decades to read the Kiss Quotient because you are going to be missing out. Trust me. Next we have The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. Thank you so much to the lovely bestie that got me this. I also showed it in my Amazon haul. But of course, once again, I have to say it here. I love you so much. This book was given to me because it has a Brazilian MC. And I have been waiting for a Brazilian MC for the longest fucking time. And now here she is. She is the moment. This book follows Lena and Max and it is dual POV. And basically, a couple years prior, Lena is set to get married to Max's brother. And then Max's brother pulls out of the wedding. And he says that Max convinced him not to go through with it. So Lena, of course hates the best man and now it is years later and she is forced to work with him because she is get this a wedding planner yes a wedding planner that was left at the altar we all see the irony we're all laughing ha 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 Anyway, so Lena hates Max for good reason. And now she's forced to work with him because she wants this promotion. And he's the marketing guy that can help her get it. So you do get a little bit of enemies to lovers in this book. I thought this was so cute. This was the perfect mix of rom-com. But of course, one of my favorite parts about this book is Lena is Afro-Brazilian. So we get to see so much culture. Like, pão de queijo, havaiana, guaraná, strogonofe de frango, <laughs> samba, capoeira, like all of that is in here. Carnaval. Tudo isso está nesse livro. And you know that I ate that shit up. Eles até falam português em algumas uh, partes nesse livro. Like, they literally speak Portuguese in some parts of this book, y'all. It is fucking amazing. We love to see it. Os brasileiros, are you watching? Read this book. It definitely followed Brazilian culture very well. It showed our foods and it showed the things we like. It shows how our families are. Very, very well done. You know, representation is sometimes not done very well by a lot of authors. I can say Mia Sosa did an amazing job with this. At least for me, I adored it. And there's a second one coming out about Lena's uh, cousin. So we're also going to get some Brazilian representation in there. I think it's called The Wedding Crasher. I'm so excited to read it. I rated this a four star. I loved it. I only didn't rate it a full five is because I wasn't fully connected to Max and Lena the entire time. But overall, it was just an amazing book. I loved it. Now, I've discovered a new favorite author of mine this month, and that is Devney Perry. I read Indigo Ridge and Juniper Hill and instantly fell in love with Devney Perry's writing. Oh my god, I have... I. Thank you so much to Bestie Katie for getting me this book. I love you so much. Once again, it is one of those that's going to be in the Amazon haul, but I have to say it here. I love you. Mwah. Indigo Ridge and Juniper Hill. This is a series. It's called The Edens. Um, you can read it as standalones, but I would highly recommend you follow because both of these books are amazing. And look at them. They're gorgeous. And the reason for the title is also incredible. Like the title and the covers make so much sense as you read the book. And it is one of those where they use the title in the book as well. We love that. Anyway, both of these are in Quincy, Montana, a small town, and both of them follow the Eden siblings. And we're gonna get more following the rest of the siblings as well. I think it's gonna be in total like six books. Indigo Ridge, you've got Winslow and you've got Griffin. Winslow, she's a police chief. She moves into the small town Quincy and she meets Griffin, who is an Eden. And the Edens in Montana, they basically kind of rule the town like there's a lot of them and <laughs> they all own properties throughout the town. They're just a very well-known family there. And Winslow moves there to go solve these cases that's been occurring where younger girls have been dying. And she wants to understand why that's happening. The small town kind of thinks they know why, but she thinks it's for a different reason so there's a lot of mystery in this and the romance between her and Griffin is also amazing and then Juniper Hill you've got Memphis and you've got Knox Eden and Memphis moves into the small town with her baby and she is living in Knox's like garage apartment so you got a little landlord energy going on and she's working at a hotel where he works at because he's a chef 
<laughs> in this one, you have forced proximity. You have kind of a little bit boss employee. You have single parent. And then in this one, you have a lot of mystery. Um, and you have a one night stand trope in this as well. Just overall, both of them were amazing. Indigo Ridge, I rated 4.75. And Juniper Hill, I rated 5. I did love Indigo Ridge, but I was more invested in the mystery than the romance, which is why it was a 4.75. And then Juniper Hill, five stars. This book is amazing. This book is incredible. The comforting vibe that this book gave me, like I felt like this book was just giving me a hug. So both of them are just amazing. Devani Perry is amazing. Her writing is so mature. She doesn't do that 80% breakup we all hate. You know that when you get to 80% of the book, they always break up and then they get back together. I hate it. But Devani Perry, not one of those, at least from these two books. One of those where the couple works through shit together and they're so mature and they handle things so well. It's like a very grown book. You know, this series is just amazing. I would highly recommend. I cannot wait for the next books because we're going to get the rest of the Eden siblings in the epilogues. Devony Perry gives with the epilogues. Get an epilogue and a bonus one and both of them give exactly what you want and more because it sets up for the next book. So the siblings, you already meet them in these and you're just so excited by the time you get to their books, you know? Highly recommend the Edens, yes, and the Grand and Jennifer Hill. This was definitely my favorite though. Don't get it twisted. This shit was so good. I'm going to be talking about it forever. Now, Shadi Bays, you know one of those books where you regret every single other book you've ever rated five stars because they didn't amount to this book? That's the next one I'm going to talk about. And that is Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. Listen, this book is a Reese's uh, book club pick. And I should just know at this point that whenever there is a book club pick, I should just go ahead and read it because it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Okay. So in this book, you have Ava and you have Shane and they met when they were in high school and they spent a week falling in love. It ends abruptly for a reason that I will not tell you because you will find out in the book. And now it's 15 years later and they're both very successful authors. They're both authors, y'all. There's something about books where they're both writers that just gets me because the writing is phenomenal. Like the words they speak would be normal in another book, but then the way they say it in books where they're writers is just magical. Anyway, 15 years later, they meet again, they run into each other at a literary event, and they spent another week relearning one another. It deals with very heavy topics. You do get past present in some parts of this book, so you do get to see them when they first meet in high school and what happened there and all of that, and then you get to see them 15 years later. Ava's also single mom. We fucking love that. There's also POC representation in this book with both of them. It deals with a lot of heavy topics, as I was saying, so for sure search up trigger warnings for this. I loved it, but definitely search up trigger warnings. This was 5 million stars. There's no question about it. It was emotional. It was amazing. It was funny. The characters were so lovable. It gave everything, basically. It gave every single thing you'd want and more. They meet at the literary event, like I said, and then she says, one thing before I forget. And he goes, what's that? And she goes, stop writing about me. And then he goes, you first. <laughs> Because they've been writing about and to each other all of these years with their books. I also forgot to mention that this book is in third person as well. So do with that information what you will. I have zero complaints. It's one of those books where you just cannot find a single thing to nitpick because it's so amazing. Yeah, five stars for sure. Infinity stars. And lastly, our last book of the month, and I saved it for last because it is the most important, and that is Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher. My copy hasn't come in yet, y'all. It's uh, running a little bit late. I'm so sorry, but here it is. I'm obsessed with Lauren Asher. So Terms and Conditions is the second book in the Dreamland Billionaire series. The first book is The Fine Print. You guys know how much I fucking love that book, and this one is no different. So basically, the dreamland billionaires it follows three brothers you've got rowan you've got declan and you've got cal first book the fine print follows rowan the second book terms and conditions follows declan and then the third book is going to be cal and these three brothers their grandfather passes away and he leaves them an inheritance but to be able to claim that inheritance they each have to do a certain thing and in the first book the fine print rowan has to go run an amusement park called dreamland and then in the second book terms and conditions for declan to get what he's always wanted which is to be ceo of their media empire um he has to not only get married but I also have an heir to the throne, I was going to say. <laughs> an heir to the Kane legacy? An heir. A baby. A fucking baby. He has to have a kid. The only issue is this man does not like anyone. This man does not get out much. He only works. But his assistant volunteers for the job, and that is Miss Iris. Y'all, in this book, you have forced proximity. You have marriage of convenience. You have age gap. You have boss employee. You have Gumpy Sunshine. You have an interracial couple. You have POC representation. You have everything you could want in this book. Five stars isn't even a question here. The fine print was five stars. 
This is five stars. I already know the third book's going to be five stars. It's just the most impeccable series ever. Declan and Iris were set up in the fine print very well. Like you already knew it was going to be them. You know that when you already know a couple is coming, you build up this expectation towards it. And usually you build it up so high that sometimes you get a little let down. No, no, not with this one. Lauren Asher said, nope, not today, because this is incredible. I don't even know how to speak about this book without just screaming that I fucking love it. And here's the thing. Usually in books, I become heavily invested in the man character. I'm like, oh my God, I love this man, right? And I do love Declan Kane. He's incredible, right? But he doesn't hold a fucking candle to Iris. Iris is the moment. She is it. We love her here. She's a plant lover. She's hilarious. She's a boss ass bitch. She overcomes so many different things to be where she's at. She works so fucking hard and she doesn't let that break her spirit. She's hilarious. She's I'm in love with Iris. Read the fine print first and then read Terms and Conditions. And listen, I am so excited for Cal's book. He's already my favorite brother and this man does not even have a book yet. So when his book comes, you best know that I'm gonna eat that shit up. Anyway, y'all, five stars for Terms and Conditions. Of course, I saved it for last because it was my favorite. So there it is. Anyway, I'm done. I've talked for so long. Once again, I always have to point out if you read 25 books this month or if you read none, don't compare yourself to other people and what they're reading. Just read whatever you want. This is a hobby. This is something you love. So just make sure that you still love it. Make sure that you are having fun, you know? Sound like a camp counselor. Always remember to have fun. You know that camp counselor from Camp Rock? I don't remember her name. She's really good. Anyway, Shotty Bays, I love you. I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Okay, I love you.